Did we get dropped by our Uber? Mm-hmm. I say we just walk back. Get a cart? Yes. <laughs> Now this is gonna get embarrassing when we show up at our slip with a shopping cart. <laughs> Last time aboard Freedom, we moved our home north to enjoy a week at anchor on Cypress Island, one of many island paradises right here in the Pacific Northwest. We explored the island from the north all the way to the south end, where we got our fill of great views, giant slugs, and then did normal boat life stuff like laundry, pimping on our dinghy, enjoying chilly sunset cruises, and working. But as always, it's time for us to pack up pull up our anchor and head to our next destination. Sad to be leaving Cypress Island, but we're headed to Paulsbo for a Nordhaven rendezvous, which should be a good time. About 40 boats, over 100 people, um, so we'll make the trek there today. Tomorrow is supposed to be a little breezy um, out of the south. Today, real light winds out of the north, so a good day to probably just make the run the entire way versus breaking up the trip. So, start weighing anchor. chain to pull up. <laughs> yeah. Like 300 feet, right? Yeah, 325 or something. <sighs> Almost all of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm gonna miss Cyprus. Yeah. So pretty here. Yep. One rag coming up just for you. Thank you. Got a little, little yuckiness on the rope. I think I could live at anchor here. <laughs> if they could only uh, put power and water out on a mooring pole. I know. How cool would that be? Then everybody would live here. Maybe we should start something like that. Like what? Moorings that include power, water, and sewer connections. So I think you're onto something. All right. Why not just a, a dock, like at Blake Island? Oh, like a dock floating out? In the... Yeah. Is that uh, basically what you're thinking of? Yeah. But not something you have to share with someone else. You know, everyone has their own space. Oh, you're More saying like individual mooring, mooring balls? Yeah. That yeah. have all that for one boat? Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> leaving Cypress Island. It is so sad to be leaving. It's such a beautiful place. Bye. See you soon. And off we go to Polsbo. Eight hours that way. T minus five hours until the party starts. Plus a couple days, but you know, early arrivals get to start the party early. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Next stop, Polsbo, a charming little town located on the Kitsap Peninsula. Since the US Canada border has remained closed, this year's Nordhaven rendezvous was rescheduled and moved from Victoria, British Columbia to Polsbo, Washington because of its central location, ability to accommodate so many large boats, the incredible hospitality, and there being no shortage of things to do and see just steps from the marina. It's a nice calm 
night, and I'm really glad we made the call to come early and avoid all the wind for tomorrow. He started to get really excited for the weekend ahead, seeing that so many beautiful Nordhaven yas had already arrived early. It was also nice because we had a warm welcome from our Nordhaven friends as we pulled into our slip, which was conveniently located right next to one of our favorite Nordhavens, the N62 Roxia. Great morning here in Polsbo. It's super calm. Um, overcast skies as you can see, but it's just so nice when you wake up early before everyone's up and out. Just enjoy it, hear the birds and the garbage truck. <laughs> but today's gonna be a busy day for us. Sean and I, along with two other couples, have been on the planning committee for this NAPS rendezvous, which is the Nordhavens across Puget Sound. And we'll just be doing some final shopping for little miscellaneous things that we need, set up. And uh, I, think, I think a lot of other things. It's gonna be a pretty busy day. Uh, we might also need to scoot to the grocery store and pick up some things because we've got guests coming, which I'm super excited about. We've got our friends from Red Rover are gonna be joining us for a couple days. And then, yeah, it's just gonna be a fun event, meeting some new owners and uh, just enjoying the weekend. You're gonna get to meet some nice new dogs, buddy. Last night, he already met two of his buddies aboard Roxia. He's a happy camper. He woke up super excited this morning. <laughs> Located on the northern shores of Liberty Bay, Pulsebo has a lot to offer cruisers and non-cruisers alike. There's a great hiking path that leads right into town where you'll find cute homes, shops, and some interesting flashes from the past. It's a great little town with a welcoming community, a rich Norwegian history, rich Norwegian pastries, and it might just be the most popular port of call for cruisers across Puget Sound. And a sparkly shimmer on our skin. After our quick walk, Sully and I headed back to the boat to get ready for the day and to receive a very special welcome gift from one of the resident dock herons. It's like a pterodactyl shed on our boat deck. Up here? Oh, you're not kidding. Oh my god. Oh, come on. Oh, man. Sean, I usually you embellish, but you're not kidding. <laughs> what do you think these birds are eating? Oh, yuck. Let her rip. Test, test, test. Welcome to the third NAPS Pulsebo 2021. Woo! Wow, look at this crowd. <laughs> okay, That's your Anna. Yeah. Oh, where's the Anna? Just this little silver button on top. Now it's on. Now it's off. Oh, cool. Yep. So that was easy. We are all set for Saturday. Sean's going to be DJ. Right, Sean? I just delegated you as DJ. Oh. We're going to have a slideshow. Highlight reels of the weekend and then uh, cocktail hour in a couple days. 
Next up, the grocery store for, you know, just a couple things. And right up the street from the Polsbo Marina, the grocery store. Five minute walk and we've got everything we need. Ooh. Wind. It's blowing today. Blowing. Glad we're not on the water today. Since we ended up with a few more than a couple things, we called an Uber. But when the third Uber canceled, we went with plan B and walked our shopping cart all the way back to the marina. No. At least there's not like a sensor on it. <laughs> I'm sure a police officer is going to pull us over. Yeah. <laughs> Polsbo isn't just filled with friendly people, but it's also a very shopping cart friendly town as well. Who knew? Now this is going to get embarrassing when we show up at our slip with a shopping cart. <laughs> and don't worry, once we dropped off our groceries, we made a beeline back uphill to return the cart. Uphill this way. Does it feel like we were just here? It does. And I'm not taking it to the front door, I'm taking it to the first cart return I find. <laughs> they can just be happy we brought it back. Yeah. Alright, we got all of our groceries unpacked and it is blowing. Like I don't think I've ever seen it blow in a marina this bad. Um, there's some boats coming in, so I'm gonna run and help. Everyone is like all hands on deck here. So, pretty scary day to be coming into a marina. I'm so thankful we arrived yesterday, and I hope no boats have any issues getting into their slip. Scary stuff. Whew. The wind didn't let up over the next couple of hours and got worse before getting better. So some boats made it in while others opted for a safer option to simply anchor in the bay and wait it out. Docking a boat is stressful enough in good conditions, so adding in strong winds and a peanut gallery has to be pretty horrifying for the captain. Luckily, the wind eventually died down, so more boats could make it safely into their slips for the weekend. All of these beautiful boats settled in, the only thing left to do is rendezvous. Day one of the Nordhaven rendezvous. About maybe less than half of the boats are here, so today's gonna be a big day, everyone's coming in. But first on my agenda today is going to Sly's Bakery and getting some Viking cups. We've got our guests on their way right now. I wanna make sure we have enough treats to properly welcome them to Polsbo. Delicious. 
delicious treats. There we go. Day one of a Nordhaven rendezvous in Polsbo means Viking cups. Mmm. With cream cheese, of course. NAPS 2021 was a huge success and a ton of fun since we got the chance to meet other owners in one place and got to check out so many amazing yachts. It's really pretty incredible to see how unique and special each and every Nordhaven is. From interior layouts to mechanical features to helm stations to storage to you name it, the same model is a one of a kind in a lot of ways. And as an owner joked, if you've seen one Nordhaven, you've seen one Nordhaven which couldn't be more true. True story of the Nordhaven, ladies and gentlemen. Sean, are you having a good time? It's like being at a wedding, but only better. I know. Like everybody's a butter. But we don't have cake, damn it. Yeah, that's true. No dessert, right? Um, I can't recall. That's all right. We're only on the planning committee, but I can't recall. <laughs> Liquid dessert tonight. Exactly. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you won't miss our next adventure. Although we're not sure where we'll be headed next, we sure hope you'll join us. See you next time. Hey guys, welcome to another Q&A with the captain aboard MV Freedom. This week we have three questions teed up for you. Let's go ahead and get started. Our first question this week comes from Derek. Derek lives in Wyoming. What engine room checks do you do while underway and how often? So usually I get down into the engine room at least every four hours, if not before. Uh, you'll actually see me doing my engine room checks a few weeks ago on a, on a previous video. Elizabeth will put a link to that video. But the things that I do when I go into the engine room is number one, I change our fuel selection valves. So as not to create a list with our boat, there's manual valves that direct fuel from one of our storage tanks into our supply tank and then ultimately the engine. So every four hours I like to switch the fuel between the port and the starboard side to keep our boat running level. The other things I do is check temperature on various things and also look for leaks. So I want to make sure that our shaft is running cool. So I check the packing temperature, make sure that it's actually dripping water as it should to keep it cooled. Uh, I check the temperature of, a, of our alternators, uh, check the uh, temperatures of our cooling system on our engine, also check the temperature and oil level on our stabilizers. And then lastly, I look at uh, some gauges uh, for our fuel filters and for our hydraulic filtration as well to see if there's any clogs happening at all in the filtration. Our second question this week comes from Terry. Terry lives in Edmonds, Washington. Wondering if you guys have any experience or opinion on a Seakeeper gyro stabilizer. Did you ever consider installing it or have you been on a boat that has had them? So the gyros uh, usually aren't used on, on trawlers, on full displacement boats. They're uh, typically used on uh, semi-displacement um, or planing style boats. And the gyro style stabilizers work very well at rest, uh, as they do underway. But in a slower moving boat, the large fins that are running through the water have more surface area and I think are much more effective. The Sea Keeper would be nice for stabilization at rest. However, they take a lot of power to run them and they also take up a considerable amount of size in the boat. So for us, stabilization at rest comes in the form of a flopper stopper. It's a pole that we can manually deploy um, with a, a flexing a gate type system that gets dropped into the water. Our anchorages up here are quite smooth, so we haven't needed to deploy it. But as we travel more parts of the world, we'll get into swellier areas and that stabilization will come in very handy. Our third question this week comes from Sam. Not sure where Sam lives. Have you ever encountered mechanical problems on Freedom that left you stranded? Uh, or have you 
were you ever taking on water and felt concerned about sinking? No, knock on wood, fortunately, we haven't had any serious mechanical problems and we haven't had any issues where we're taking on water. Really the only mechanical issue we've had is we've had a stabilizer failure. It was isolated to one fin. We're able to pin it in the centered position and the boat still operates just fine uh, with the other stabilizing fin doing uh, all the heavy lifting, if you would. But uh, we try to keep freedom in tip-top mechanical shape to avoid breakdowns and to avoid those mishaps on the water. Our fourth question this week, so you guys get a bonus question because I did say three questions at the beginning of the video. The fourth question comes from Jeff. Jeff lives in Seattle and says, you seem to leave your transom door open whenever you leave on your dinghy. Is there a reason for that? Um, no real reason for it. It's just easy to leave the boat, hop in the dinghy and take off. I guess one reason would be uh, the door does latch in the open position, so it's not going to flop around on us, but to close it, the handle is on the inside. So you'd close the door and you kind of have to reach around it to reopen it. And there's a top piece that has to get lifted. So it's just easier to leave it open. And that's why we do. So as always, thank you all for your great questions. If you want one of your questions answered in an upcoming video, look us up on Instagram and drop us a direct line. Shoot us your name, your location, and your question. We'll get it added to the list and get it answered on an upcoming video. We hope everybody has an excellent week and we'll see you on the next one, guys. Cheers.